and youth workers with safe schools. And also Atala Andradas, who is a consultant with our English language learners department. So we also have Tradice Roth, who is an elementary teacher with Safe and Inclusive Schools. And together, these three ladies are going to tell you a little bit more about the program Unlearn and how we've used it in Grand Erie. So on behalf of Safe and Inclusive Schools, I just want to say that certainly these conversations about equity, inclusion, diversity are big in our minds right now and happening in our homes and, and in our conversations with colleagues. And we really believe as a team that the unlearned materials will help you have those courageous conversations in your classrooms and with your students. So we're thrilled that you're with us here today and, and certainly will be available to support you as you roll this out in your own schools. So I'm going to turn it over to Tanya and say good morning. Tanya, you are muted, so we can't hear you yet. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you. You're muted again, Tanya. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening, why I keep on getting muted. I'm having a technical difficulty. I don't seem to be able to forward uh, the slide. I'm not sure. Can, my microphone keeps on getting muted. Is anybody muting microphones uh, for the whole group? Do you want me to try to show the slide presentation from my end? Yeah, you might have to. I'm not sure why I keep on getting muted. I unmute myself and then it's uh, muting again. So my apologies. We can hear you now. Okay, so who is Unlearn? Uh, so Unlearn is a small Canadian-based social enterprise. Uh, the founder is Abi Alawali, um, and he's been recognized uh, on several occasions for his work. Their mission is to provoke thought and create positive change, uh, starting with our youth. Uh, they encourage critical thinking to challenge bias and prejudice. And by connecting with school boards, uh, they feel that they're uh, able to access um, our youth uh, of today to be able to take a critical look um, at uh, bias and prejudice. They work to break down barriers and promote social responsibility. This program is designed to meet anybody where they currently are at. So uh, for some people uh, who are just embarking on conversation and understanding and learning, this program can meet you there. For others who um, have, have done uh, quite a bit of work in this area, this program could also meet you there. And facilitation uh, of this tool, they want people to be creative. They want uh, basically presentation to be as unique as, any, as the individual. And so they give creative license for us to use their tool in any way that we see uh, fit to have uh, critical conversations and to challenge one another. So the Unlearn program is comprised of two poster packs and they have a company, uh, accompanying discussion guides. 
Uh, in each pack, there are 24 posters, and we will show you some of the posters uh, later on in the presentation. They don't really give a prescribed delivery. So although there are accompanying guides, uh, again, you can be very creative on how you utilize these tools. You can use one poster or you can use them all. Uh, and the other uh, great thing about this resource is that uh, it's also available uh, with the French accompanying discussion guides. So again, um, it allows for uh, our schools who are French immersion uh, to utilize the resource just as the rest of our schools. So in Grand Erie, uh, we had training uh, back in 2018-19 uh, school year, and we brought together one teacher and administrator from each building. Uh, each school was given a poster pack. So some schools will have poster pack one, some schools will have poster pack two. We do understand and recognize that sometimes uh, we may look back in our school and we may not be able to find uh, that package. And so if this happens to be your situation, we encourage you to get in touch with us in Safe Schools through Christine um, and let us know and we'll see what we can do uh, to support you in the use of the Unlearn tool. And then the other uh, part is that Unlearn is still um, willing and able and would love to be invited into your school. There is a fee for service and so I know that they, they are very creative. Uh, when we were working with them for our uh, training, uh, they, they really want to get to know where we are at in the work that we've done and I know they would do that with individual schools and you can have them for a half day, a full day and again if um, you know that's something through fundraising dollars or through school budgets that you wanna have uh, Unlearn come, you can contact them directly. So where do we start with Unlearn? So with this resource, we need to start with ourselves and we need to do some, some looking internally and have some dialogue with ourselves um, about our unconscious bias. So we need to understand what bias is. We need to understand what our biases or biases are. We, we need to take a look at how do we deal with them and calling them, right? So what is it that, that I have a bias against? What, because we all have bias. So it's not that um, I can say I'm without bias. How we've, we've, uh, how we've, learn to be over time, um, our values, our morals, the way we, we've been socialized. Um, so we all have bias. It's just what is it that we're going to do with those bi biases and then how are we going to challenge them um, and, and be able to uh, move forward uh, from our bias into this work. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Atella to spend some time with us. Okay, um, hello everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, thank you the Safe um, and Inclusive Schools team for inviting me. And um, as uh, Tanya mentioned, um, the Unlearn Poster Pack is developed to facilitate conversation, generate dialogue, and uh, around social justice issues. Uh, the goal is to challenge people to think critically about these issues and not to tell them how to think. So therefore, it is important that we guide students to develop critical consciousness and assist them in develop um, cultural competence while holding high expectations. And th this also applies to us as the educators. Uh, it is important that as educators, we foster a uh, pedagogy in our classroom where, uh, where we are accepting of everybody and highlighting their strengths, the, the strengths of their students. So throughout this presentation, we'll briefly explore what culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy is. This is a, a big topic and this on its own can be a, a webinar, but I will just touch in um, some of the key elements about um, how we understand uh, this framework and how Unlearn will help uh, in our classroom, to, especially to make some connections with uh, with some culture, curriculum, and you know, again, questioning our, our own biases too. 
So what is culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy? So it's not a new term. So back in the mid 1990s, uh, Gloria Lanson Billings, who's a, a teacher educator, uh, she's a university professor in charge of curriculum development. She introduced the term culturally relevant teaching to describe teaching that integrates students' background knowledge and prior home and community experiences into the curriculum and the teaching and learning that takes place in the classroom. So culture is about ways of knowing. As we know, culture goes much deeper than typical understanding of ethnicity, race, and or faith. It encompasses broad notions of similarity and difference and is reflect, that is reflected in ourselves and in our students' multiple social identities and the ways of knowing and being in the world. So in order to ensure that all students feel safe, welcome, accepted and inspired to succeed in a culture of high expectations for learning, schools and classrooms must be responsive to culture. Again, culture for this particular uh, framework is used as a resource for learning or as uh, Gloria Ladson Bellings likes to call it, as a vehicle for learning. Uh, other theorists in the mid, uh, in the early 2000s, so Gay, Villegas, and Lucas, uh, coined the, also the term around culturally responsive pedagogy to describe teaching that recognizes that all students learn, learn differently and that, that these differences may connect to their background, language, family structure, and social or cultural identity. So therefore, Cultural, culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy, or as in education that we love acronyms, the CRRP, is more than acknowledging just cultural uniqueness of each of our students, but intentionally in nurture said in order to create and facilitate effective conditions for learning. So CRRP sees student diversity in terms of student strengths and opportunities to enhance learning rather than deficits that students bring into the classroom. So CRRP seeks to empower students intellectually, socially, and emotionally as we foster their voice in an environment where we hold high expectations, acquiring cultural competence and nurturing critical consciousness. Next slide, please, Tanya or Christine. Uh, there are three central principles uh, for the framework for culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy, and they are holding high expectations, acquiring cultural competence, and nurturing critical cultural thinking. As I mentioned, um, uh, Gloria Lassen's Billings, who was a pioneer in introducing uh, this framework, she maintains that um, it is important to make sure that we understand what culture means and use it as a, as a vehicle for learning and enhancing a student-centered approach. Next slide, please. So what do we mean by high expectations? So high expectations refers to ensuring that high academic standards are set for all students while setting these high expectations as educators, we understand the importance of differentiated instruction, scaffolding, by using a variety of assessment to support students as they achieve those expectations. Lots and Bellings again, she highlights as, as educators, we have a responsibility to ensure that we focus on a strength-based approach to teaching. Learning goals and curriculum connections um, align with culture and we should be using that in order to maintain uh, the high expectations in our classroom. And once again, culture is viewed as a resource for learning, as a way, and it's about a ways of knowing. Next slide, please. So cultural competence. Um, this is usually a term that um, a couple of colleagues and I, sometimes we have a little bit of a hard time um, using it because it really it does not mean that we need to become experts. 
So it it doesn't mean that we have to be the know the know it alls or the holders of the knowledge. So it, it does not require for us to become experts in cultures different from our own. It is an approach that focuses on us attaining skills, knowledge, and attitudes to work more effectively and, res and in respectful ways with students, families, and people from different cultures. We should never assume that we are the bearers of knowledge or experts. However, we rather should empower learners to share their experiences and make home to school connections based on their cultures. Recognize that the expertise resides in the rich experiences of families, communities, and the learners themselves. Educators use these experiences of their learners and make connections to the curriculum in ways that uses culture as a vehicle for learning. Next slide. So critical consciousness. Critical, critical consciousness is developed when we challenge students to question, analyze, and critique the norms and values that shape society and lead to social inequities. Lazen Belling's work, she argues that learners, but when we give learners the tools to critically evaluate the norms, values, and beliefs, and worldviews in a way that subverts status quo. So we have a, um, we can empower students to question and, ala and, and uh, analyze and really see whose point of view is being represented and whose point of view is being um, not taken into account. And that's when uh, we get into a critical thinking about questioning what some of the materials even that we use in our classrooms. So cu culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy is a student-centered framework that it highlights the uniqueness of each student and not just acknowledging, but also nurtures it. Next slide. Uh, something that I would like to highlight is a culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy is not about cultural celebrations. No, it is aligned with traditional ideas of multiculturalism. It involves careful acknowledgement, respect and understanding of differences and its complexities. And I really like this graph. Um, this is taken from a resource that um, you will see at the end of the of my part. It's a resource uh, printed by um, EDFO, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. And, uh, and as you can see, the goal of the CRRP is to transform thinking and change trajectories. And then, and then you will see different things versus um, just sharing some elements of, of culture that are like we will see on the next slide that like I like to call the, the top of the iceberg. So it is important that uh, when we embrace this framework, it's to make sure that you know that we explore power, privilege, we question, we challenge oppre oppressive measures, we build on live experiences of students to motivate and differentiate. And you know, and and like as Tanya uh, mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, it is important that we get to know ourselves, our biases, and question who we are too, and how we can bring also our our strengths and learn from our students, their families, and our communities. Oh, that looks a little more bad. Um, this is just a um, a graph to show it's, a, it's a, a, sorry, a metaphor, which is the iceberg metaphor of culture where it distinguishes between the surface and the deep culture. The deep culture is, the, is mostly hidden and it comprises the aspects of identity that most powerfully affect our self-concept, perceptions, and interactions with others. So as you can see, the graph is really powerful. We tend to focus on the surface culture, but it is the deep culture that it, it really, um, the one that, we should make sure that we respond with acceptance and sensitivity in our classrooms and, and hallways. And this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, it's also placed on a resource that I will show you at the end of my part. And, uh, and is I actually have it printed all over my, my computer and, <laughs> and different things, but it's the knowledge that children bring to school derived from personal and cultural experiences is central to their learning. To overlook these resources to deny children access to the knowledge construction process. 
So therefore, the CRRP, or culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy, goes beyond showing just love for culture or for, for things that we know as surface culture. But it is important to appreciate cultures by honoring authentic voices and ensuring that delving deeper into understanding culture is not superficial or monolithic. And for this part, um, I would like to also highlight that within Grand Erie District School Board, we have a lot of people that can support um, this type of learning in the classroom. We have um, Sabrina Sawyer, our Indigenous um, Education Lead. We have um, ELL, uh, an English Language Learners Team, with itinerant teachers assigned to, um, to a school. There is myself, and there is also um, Christine Bibi, Tanya uh, Tradis, and the team from Safe and Inclusive Schools, as well as the Mental Health team that can help to support this work. And last slide, please. So therefore, the CRRP is a framework that can foster support, create, and enable students' learning opportunities. All experiences, when contextualized appropriately, are valued and can be brought into the classroom. CRRP is a strength-based approach that informs teaching and learning success. As an effective practitioner of CRRP, the first steps is definitely, as Tanya mentioned, we need to build our own, our own self-awareness because this impacts our role as educators. As educators, we must be prepared to teach all students and culturally relevant and re responsive pedagogy is an approach that validates and affirms the cultural capital that our students bring to the classroom each and every day. This journey also brings us closer to providing relevant and authentic le learning opportunities every day for every student in every classroom. Uh, this is um, an image of the two resources that I used to, um, to show you some of the snippets about um, culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy. The top one is a capacity building series monogram printed by the Ministry of Education in 2013. If you, um, I think Christine is gonna put this PowerPoint on the portal, but if you hop over the, the picture, you can click on it, it takes you to, to the PDF. And the second uh, resource is called Respond and Rebuild which is the EDFO guide or the Elementary Teachers Federation guide to culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy. That, that one, it is not free. You will have to purchase it, but it's, a, it's only $10. I really highly encourage you if you can get your hands on, on those two um, resources, it will you know, build a deeper understanding about um, culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy. So thank you so much. Thank you, Atella. Hey. So as we start to dig deeper into the unlearn tool, one of the first things that we need to look at is facilitation. And so some individual considerations for facilitation um, that are important uh, in the use of the tool. So as the facilitator is the ability uh, to emphasize, um, the ability to be an active listener, flexibility uh, and the ability to stay neutral because every as Atala uh, spoke to that everybody's um, experience is their own um, and it may be contrary to other students within the class um, they may experience these posters differently and they may express differently and so we want to be able to stay neutral in that process and be able to flow with the experience to allow uh, the participants uh, the ability to um, move through the process together as a community. As for students, uh, it's really important to establish group norms and guidelines that ensure safety. Because again, this, this is a process of risk taking, um, being able to speak about um, how you are impacted by something that you see uh, is, is taking risk for our students and for ourselves. Having clear guidelines and instructions for the task at hand. So again, trying hard to um, stay within um, those guidelines, knowing that uh, being flexible uh, is important to the process as well. And then the right to pass. So not putting um, individuals on the on on um, on the hot seat, so to speak, to be able to. Um, 
respond or speak to a poster at any given time, but allowing them to do that at, uh, at their own time, their own pace, um, and when they feel comfortable to do so. So some environmental considerations, so that the, uh, it's important that the environment is inclusive, uh, that we work to create safety and a bias-free space, that students see themselves reflected in the class and within the school, and then also uh, to pay attention to the physical layout for the classroom. And so we will talk about some applications uh, of this tool um, in a little bit. But again, we want to create a sense of community and so that we're all working together uh, on this um, activity or, um, you know, there are opportunities for uh, individual response as well. But again, we, our, our goal is to create community um, where we're exploring uh, these posters together. And then just a little bit about courageous conversations, because really that's what it is we're doing, is we are um, engaging in some conversations where we may have to manage some conflict with differencing of opinion and how we see or how somebody else sees um, a picture or an experience. Uh, there will probably be emotionality attached to um, some of the posters. It may bring up um, a feeling that isn't comfortable. Being prepared for percep uh, perceptions that are contradictory. So again, we are all unique and individuals. So each of us will see pictures, we will feel different things, and they might uh, be in contrast to one another. Understanding uh, the environment of class and student dynamics is really important because we don't want to set anybody up um, in a situation where uh, they could be, say, further victimized or uh, become a target uh, because they've taken a risk. So understanding how our students are working together prior to doing these activities is really, really important. And then to expect the unexpected. And whether that's um, an aha moment, a light bulb moment, um, or uh, a negative situation um, that we might have to navigate to find uh, a common ground, these, these posters um, have the ability to do that. And so as facilitators, we need to be prepared for those things. Okay, so now I'd like to ask uh, Tradice uh, to join us, and she's going to spend some time talking about curriculum. All right, thank you, Tanya. So up next are some ways that you can link the Unlearn program to the curriculum, and it's focusing on the primary, junior, and intermediate levels. And this is a quote taken from the language curriculum under the overview part. And it says, most of what primary students know about language comes from listening and speaking with others being read to by adults and interacting with media texts such as advertisements, television programs, video games, songs, photographs, and films. The expectations for language build upon the prior knowledge and experience that students bring to Ontario classrooms from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. So here as a teacher, you can choose a picture that you feel relates to a cultural or diverse background and that gives your students a chance to talk about um, themselves and a chance to share their cultural background. Next slide, please. And this is the overview for grades four to six. And again, under the overview, it's the focus for your junior level is designed to engage students in meaningful interactions with a wide variety of texts. They look beyond the literal meaning of text and observe what is present and what is missing in order to analyze and evaluate an author's intent. Junior students learn to identify and explore multiple perspectives, question the messages in text, and look at issues related to fairness, equity, and social justice. So at the junior level, um, we want our students to look past that literal meaning. So they see the picture and then in that discussion, they can go a bit further and relate to equity, equity or social justice issues. Next slide. 
And then at the intermediate level, their focus is that all students, especially young adolescents, need to see themselves in the text they encounter. They need to be able to choose independ independently to read, listen to, or interact with texts that have personal relevance in their day-to-day -day lives, including texts that deal with issues related to fairness, equity, and social justice. So again, this gives your intermediate level a chance to relate, especially right now with what's going on in the media. Uh, you could put up one of these posters and it gives students to relate to their personal lives. Next slide, please. So here's an example of how we can uh, use Unlearn and also use cross-curricular um, connections with language, science, and the arts. So on the left-hand side, it's an example of a bullying lesson that a grade five language teacher did. And this is all on the Unlearn website as well. And it gives you how you can use your big ideas with media, writing, and oral communication. And then on the right-hand side, your specific curriculum connections. So some of the ideas they use were extending understanding, making inferences, looking at different points of view, producing media texts, responding and evaluating text, creating and presenting, and then analyzing the effects of human activities on habitats and communities. So there we can see it was language, there was some science in there and some arts as well. Next slide, please. Uh, so if you're new to the program, it's good to start with your big ideas. What do you want your students to learn and where are you going to move forward from there? So here's an example of a statement. I want my grade four students to know that they are capable of making a difference and affecting change. And then as stated before, the program is quite open, so you can, you want to be creative and do different ideas for all of them. So here, here are some outcomes that some teachers talked about. So as Tanya said before, it can be emotional during some of these activities because students are starting to relate to personal experiences in their background. But in the end, uh, it does create a solid sense of community within the classroom because your students are being heard. And again, there could be some controversy with what they're saying, but it gives students that chance to express themselves. Uh, some students also said it gave them a voice and it allowed them to feel empowered. So then the hope is that these conversations will also uh, come home with them and they can continue those conversations with their parents and their friends. And then uh, from a teacher from Grand Dairy District School Board uh, at Dufferin, she used the posters to have classroom discussions about acceptance of differences. And they tied those posters into their English language program, especially the media portion of it. And they talked about the elements of design. And a great aspect was that they created their own, their own posters after and hung them around the school, which created a lot more discussion amongst the other grades there. Okay, thank you, Tridis. Um, Some examples of how to use the unlearned resource. So I, I've worked with teachers who have used it as a part of bell work. So when students come in in the morning, um, a poster is up and uh, they use it as an individual time to reflect on, on what it is that they're seeing, they're feeling, they're thinking about what they see in front of them. Um, as Trudy spoke to uh, as a part of curriculum, some teachers have used it as an introduction unit to lessons, allowing brainstorming and engagement into conversation. Uh, circle meetings, so again, around supporting that classroom community, and then sometimes when things um, aren't uh, aren't going well. So uh, we've had situations where in safe schools we've supported uh, teachers um, where there was uh, issues uh, and students were struggling. Uh, with racism within a class. Um, so we would use the unlearned posters around uh, having dialogue um, in relation to uh, a presenting uh, a poster to them. Some schools have done a whole school activity, so a poster a day, and every teacher is utilizing uh, that poster as a part of their day, a part of their week. And then system-wide, uh, we've used uh, the posters with Global Dignity Day. And so we've had on Learn come um, to work with our uh, students who have been participants in Global Dignity Day. Um, and one of the, the ways in which uh, Unlearn likes to use 
the pictures in uh, a large group is something called the gallery walk. And so here's an example um, of how one of the pictures uh, was used. And so it had basically um, each poster was attached to uh, a chart paper and then students uh, could walk around and basically just respond to what they were thinking, feeling, uh, what spoke to them as a part of that poster. And then as a part of the gallery walk, uh, at the end, um, you can have group discussion uh, about some of the reflections that are contained within uh, each of these posters. So this is another poster that's within um, the poster packs. And an example of, and again, this is blurry, the writing on the outside, but this was one of the gallery walks that took place during Dignity Day, uh, where students had walked around and reflected um, on each of the posters. And again, uh, using you know, a poster such as this in relation to uh, social media um, and engaging conversation with students um, about that experience or what this poster says to them. This is another poster uh, that's available. And what I've done here is I've attached um, the companion guide that goes with uh, each of the poster packs. And basically it talks specifically um, and asks questions about each of the posters. So again, um, we could just, uh, as facilitators, we could use these questions um, as a part of facilitating um, this discussion with our classrooms. And then here's another example. And again, uh, the posters are switched back and forth, so I can't tell you what's in poster pack one or poster pack two, uh, but they are both um, a part of the packages. So another example um, is for four questions. Um, and sometimes uh, uh, putting it up as bell work, something like this. So what do you see? What do you feel? What do you think? And what do you wonder? And again, getting at, you know, individual uh, response. Um, but again, you could hold this as a classroom discussion. If there's a sense of uh, community and safety where, where students uh, feel that they can be vulnerable, um, to share within that classroom community, uh, this may be something that you would you would have as a classroom discussion. So now I'm just going to flip through uh, some of the other posters. I've added about ten and give you a few few uh, seconds to reflect on each of the posters and see how you might um, what speaks to you um, and how you might incorporate this into. Uh, your day with students uh, or your learning with students.
Okay, so some of the resources that we wanted uh, to make available to you. So again, Ontario Education's Equity Action Plan, and we've put a link here um, in this PowerPoint, and the PowerPoint will be up uploaded to uh, the portal so that you can access it. On Learn, uh, again, their website has lots of information um, speaking about how you could apply and the curriculum connections. We've done uh, quite a bit of work with Harmony Movement and my understanding from speaking with Christine and Natalia yesterday that Harmony Movement has made some changes uh, in their service delivery model and it looks like a lot of their support is now online. Um, but again, their website is accessible and their information is still there for us to access. EGAL is another uh, group that we've done quite a bit of work with. Um, and they have come out uh, to do training uh, with our with our system um, over the last couple of years. And then Global Dignity, this is the web page um, that talks about Global Dignity Day. And there's quite a bit of information uh, for us to access uh, and different activities and experiences uh, and information sharing uh, there as well. All right, so that brings us to the end of our Unlearn presentation today. Um, as always, we want to leave an opportunity for some questions and answers. So uh, I can't see the questions and answers. I'm hoping, or the questions actually. So I'm hoping Christine can see them and maybe she could uh, read out any questions. And then Trudice and Atala, if you uh, want to respond, uh, then we can take, take on those questions together. Thank you, Tanya. I'll just chime in here. Um, and I see that my cursor is still showing up on the screen. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so we did have a, a, a thoughtful comment that I would like to hear uh, you three consider and maybe speak to. And it's Jennifer. She writes, being aware of my own experiences and biases, I've been engaged in conversations with a lot of individuals who feel their experiences aren't, val aren't valued when time is given to other experiences. In general, those who see themselves as the all lives matter individuals. It's exhausting, but it is impacting how I am perceiving this webinar, not that I align with them, just that I'm aware of their perspectives. How do you address this in the most constructive way possible while still honoring their perspectives? Atala, if you wanted to chime in there, you still are on mute, so we can't hear you if you're yeah. trying. Yeah, um, that's a loaded question for a, for a webinar, but um, I, I think right now in, in, this, in this particular situation that we are currently living, it, it's important to have open dialogue with, with people. And when, when I talk about dialogue, you know, the real definition of the word dialogue means to have a, a conversation and try to build common understanding. Not that we have to agree with each other's points, but we have to build common understanding about what is it that, that is happening and how we can come up to, to a solution or to make a, to make a decision in regards to, to a particular topic. But uh, again, the importance of having dialogue to make sure that we build common understanding about each other's point of view, it's really, really important. Um, with certain things and with certain groups, uh, as we know, um, they have been oppressed for centuries. Uh, you know, we, we live in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this world where the legacies have been you know, in place for many, many years, and it's time that we, we need to question and we need to call it what it is. So um, the All Lives Matter movement, yes, All Lives Matter, definitely, you know, that's under the Human Rights Code. However, you know, we need to really address, you know, right now, Black racism, Indigenous, um, you know, oppression and racism, like we need to name things by what they are and we need to start moving forward by building allyships and, you know, making sure that we are building common understanding and making sure that we are moving forward. So I know th this can be probably take forever, but that's uh, that's just my own my own personal opinion. So I will definitely start dialogue. And, and as we mentioned throughout the presentation, it has to be in an environment that it's 
that it's safe, that is why it's so important to create those norms when, yes, all the voices are heard in a respectful manner, but, you know, the intent is to build to build that common understanding. And I just, I've been following um, a, bit, a big advocate. Her name is Kika Ojo Thompson, who's um, uh, a consultant for the equity and inclusion and well-being um, for the Waterloo region. And she talks about how these conversations are very uncomfortable. And, and I'm quoting what she mentioned. So she says, when she's doing a presentation and she's talking about these really, really hardcore topics, she says that safety, yes, safety is a priority, but comfort is off the menu. So um, it, it's something that we need to tackle in order to make sure that we are addressing what it needs to be addressed. So thank you. Thanks, Natalia. Great answer. So not seeing any other questions here, Tanya, at this point, just some comments. People are uh, definitely enjoyed the posters and um, just want to mention again, if in your school you don't seem to have access to your posters, you're not sure where they are, or if you have your posters but you don't have the discussion guide that goes with the posters, please send me an email either way and we'll try to make sure that you have some resources to be able to use these posters. So I'll turn it back over to you, Tanya, to say goodbye to everybody. Could, could I just? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, Atala. Atala, you're still muted if you were oh, trying to add sorry. in. Yeah, That's I guess okay. it, we hear it, you was, now. it was on and off. <laughs> okay, so I said probably that there is a lot of uh, different um, people in different positions within the, the webinar. Uh, I just wanted to, to bring it back to, to culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy. Um, the Unlearn posters really kind of supports that framework in a sense that it brings an opportunity to have those conversations and that dialogue to build common understanding and see where where we are in, in different topics. So the um, when we build that framework within our schools and our classrooms, we start really tackling and debunking those systemic barriers. So I, I, I think um, it, it's a very, it's a, it's a great resource to start, you know, to start somewhere, you know, like um, I, I think uh, Abby, the presenter, the creator of Unlearn has talked about that, how it is important that because they are just provoking um, Photographs. There, there is really nothing um, threatened to to begin with. There is no words. So it, it just it's an opportunity again to generate dialogue about you know social justice issues and to think critically about these issues and and to you know no nobody has the right answer. Everybody has their own point of view based on their experiences. So I really really encourage everybody to dig deeper about um, culturally responsive and relevant pedagogy because it's just best practice is a way that we should be operating in the system of education. So thank you. Thanks, Atala. Excellent point. And uh, Kendall also had a suggestion. I don't know if she's still on the call, but using the posters as a way to start courageous conversations in a staff team is also another way to use on learn. And certainly in our safe schools uh, team, we did that a few times with the posters and it does uh, create some interesting discussion. So that's another way to use them. Over to you, Tanya. Thank you, Christine. Um, so I just want to take an opportunity to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. Um, and for uh, some of you who have been on multiple calls, uh, this is our last webinar uh, for this school year. And we want to thank everybody again for uh, taking part um, with us over, uh, I guess, the last three months. If you have any questions uh, related to Unlearn uh, or anything related to safe and inclusive schools, uh, we are accessible by email. Um, so please feel free to send us an email or a question um, and we will get back to you. Um, we may not have the answer right away, but we will uh, find it and uh, be back in touch to you. Uh, so uh, it's Thursday, not normally our, our normal day of Friday, but uh, one more day this week and then enjoy your weekend. Thanks everybody.